All right, uh, welcome back. Just uh, going through some uh, this. Uh, I'm go Mr. Panda, let me get back to you. But before that, uh, there are reports uh, online as well, because we do remember we had, while we were discussing the elections, uh, the supplementary elections across the country, one of the members, the executive director of Yaga, was on the program. And then at the point, he said he had received reports of uh, disruptions in Bichi local government area in Kano State. But then if you go online, you'll also get to see... Uh, their chair, Dr. Husseini Abdu, alongside uh, the executive director, Samson Itodo, addressed a press conference in Abuja about intimidation of observers and media uh, in Zango polling unit. They talked about Karaye Ward. They talked about several areas in the state, but yet you insist that there was no such thing. But let's get this correct. I never say there are no little schemes in here and there. But what I'm saying is, within the context of the rerun that you had, where 141 people will determine the fate of like 15 million people, it's not going to be just a Tea Party affair. But if all these of the numbers that you are citing, that they have reports, and none of them came out with any report to say that people were killed, but you now have Hassan and the Concordia group telling Nigerians that uh, four people were killed in Rimangado, 20 people were killed, they are, 30 were killed, as if they are placed. We should know that we owe it a duty to tell the truth as it is, not because we want to score any cheap political uh, goal, but because the truth has to stand. There is no way you can compare the election in Kano with uh, what happened, for instance, even in Lagos, where we saw uh, people been stoned or where talkless of uh, rivers where people uh, talks were using uh, guns to, to to intimidate to kill to maim and to stop the whole election from taking place you cannot like i said have a a hundred percent free fair election without any skinism given the context of you have only 141 thousand bots to determine the fate of at least 15 million people. But uh, we should not make a, a, an issue out of the little schemism. All those uh, foreign of that was, all those reporters that you cited, did a single one of them cited any place where somebody was even wounded, not talk of being killed? And if there is none, why, what, what are we now saying? If, and none of them, it, okay, you said border intimidation. What, what do you, how do you determine border intimidation? Because in all the following units, both APC and PDF got their vote as uh, their based on the strengths they have in that polling unit. Kano is an APC state. It has always been. It will continue to be. Uh, the president won with over 100 and uh, uh, over uh, with over 1 million 200 thousand votes. And I may even ask uh, Lawan, which is because it is Jermaine, if he's saying he is in APC because of Buhari, not because of the party. Now, okay, let him tell us the 1.2 million that Buhari got in Kano. Was it pre fairly given as an APC member, as he claimed, or was it rigged as PDV are claiming? Because it is very important his state his position so that we know where he belongs to. Well, you know, when you say that Kano has always been a PDP state, you have many who will tell you that, look, that, that Kano, I mean, the, an APC state, they will challenge and say, how could yes. you, before APC was created, which state was in power in Kano state? And then if it's an APC, then how did they get over one million votes? But you challenge Hassan uh, to come up with certain yeah. things uh, before we went to break. But let me go back to him now and get a response on what you said before we went on break. Hassan, could you go ahead? Uh, first of all, Chamberlain, let me make something, something clear. I said I am in politics because of President Muhammad Buhari, because of uh, his sincerity and, and firmness on things like this. And when he came into politics in 2003, I, I joined him in the AMPP, and uh, when we moved, when he moved to the AP, uh, CPC, I also joined him. Uh, during the merger, I was uh, uh, together. We were together, and we formed APC. This is why I said I am in politics because of President Muhammad Buhari. It is because of him that I am in politics, and that is why I am in APC. I will tell you this in our report. Uh, citing an example of places where there were violence and killing. Minjibur local government, violence, many cars burned, many people injured. Rogo, 
overnight violence. They brought in talks a night before the elections and went into people's houses and drove people out of their houses. There were over, over, uh, overnight violence, many persons injured. Rimingadu, four persons were killed in Tamawa, Gulu, and Atawa villages in Rimingadu local government. More than 10 cars were destroyed. Uh, Dala local government, one person was killed in Kofar Mazugal. Violence all over the place. Kibia, violence all over the place. Takai local government, many people injured. Sumaila, one person was killed in Kamawa village, in Kanawa village, violence all over the polling units. Gabasawa, very violent. Uh, Gama, talks took over 40 polling units. This is as per our reports on uh, what we got on, 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 uh, from our people on ground. Tofa, mad with violence. Gorzu, intimidation, harassment of voters. The only places elections were successful in Kanu, in, in the rerun election of Kanu, is, was uh, uh, most polling units in Dala, uh, uh, most polling units in Kura, and a very, very few polling units in Gama. And uh, that Mr. Is Mr. Hazan, um, these reports that you have, um, is, could you forward them? Have you forwarded them to the police? Is there any way they can be useful to security agencies? Yes, well, yes, we have. We have. Our people on ground in Kano have written and have cited all this to the police. One. Secondly, we, will write, we are going to write to the party citing all these places, telling the party that they should investigate what really actually transpired in these places. Now, Mr. Uh, Hazan, uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are a member of the APC. Uh, for these reports that you have brought to the fore, even though your party won that election, couldn't you be accused of anti-party activities? No, uh, Ayo. The leader of my party, President Muhammad Buhari, told us to vote for governors across party affiliation. He is the leader of our party. He is also Mr. Pandal's leader. So I don't think I did any anti-party uh, uh, move in this. Hello, uh, Chamberlain. Go ahead, Mr. Panda. I, yeah, I think Hassan, Hassan should understand the gravity of what he is saying. Because in this country, the security agencies must be off and doing. If Hassan is really now these figures of people that he said were killed, if he's spreading hate speech and fake news, I think the security agencies need to invite Hassan to for him to be able to, 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 to authenticate what he said here live on television. You cannot continue to lie that people were killed in Dala, people were killed in... Now, first of all, let me put it, 99% of Kano people are Muslims. And as soon as a Muslim dies, he is taken to the graveyard where prayers are said uh, for the reforms of his soul. Can, because we now saw when we had little skimmizing, when we had Daba and Kano, and two people sustained injuries who happened to be from the Konkosia group, like him. And it was all over the media that these people were killed. Why has it become difficult for them since the Commissioner, Honorable Commissioner of Information in Kano, challenged them to come out with any physical evidence of where prayers were said for those that were assumed to have been killed, where their graves were. Because you cannot, absolutely what you are doing here is creating hate speech and uh, separating fake news. Can the security agents you have now cited like 10 people that were killed? Well, Mr. Panda, you know, you, you repeatedly said that he's a member of the Kwanguasia group, but he has also repeatedly said he is a member of the APC, and he said why he is a member of the party. But before the supplementary election, there was this deployment of AIGs, DIGs in the states. Uh, so there are many who wonder, why was that necessary in the first place? Because if before the supplementary elections, all was going well, why do you think that there was a need for the redeployment? Because many said that that was to go do a hatchet job. Now, first of all, look at it this way. You have rerun in just very, very few falling units in Kano out of the over uh, 8,000 falling units. Remember the massive security deployment, deployment that was done in these falling units. If anybody is coming out to now try to pen these elections, did not even took place. Remember that of all the eight local government, PDP won only in Dala local government during the run. And if Hassan is citing Dala, it's the only place where election hold 
of course, certainly, you know, from where he is coming. But like I said, when you are having the uh, election, uh, coalition, uh, you saw people wearing red caps, claiming that they are uh, agents of AD, agent of uh, NAV, but uh, certainly saying that, no, PDP should be protected. So if Hassan is coming here wearing black cap instead of the red, so that Nigerians will know from which angle he is coming, uh, well, I think he can fool uh, over your eyes, certainly not me and not the people of Kano. We know uh, there is no way any APC member, knowing how central, how critical Kano is, will now come and begin to say he wishes that APC has not won Kano. Mr. Hassan, Kano. Um, there's something you said the other time that uh, is instructive. You said uh, Ganduje won the election, but APC lost. What do you mean? Okay, I'll explain. A lot of us that are party, uh, that are APC members in Kano, gave a protest vote, vote to the opposition. Why? Because we wanted to do away with Ganduji. After seeing that, when, the, when some results were cancelled, a rerun was arranged. And that rerun didn't take place at all. And that is it. And I still stand, there was no election on that rerun. There was no election. I am not saying my party lost the election. No, there was no election. And as it stands today, my party has lost Kano. Ganduje wrote elections and, and won Kano by himself. But my party, as it stands to the APC, has lost Kano. We need to do a lot do of you work have, in Kano to win all. Do you have proof that the governor or the winner of that election wrote the elections? Do you have proof for that? There is no winner in that election. There was no election in Kano. There was no winner in that election. I am still standing that there was no election on that Saturday of the rerun. Well, first of all, Chamberlain, I think... Uh, and the very few polling units that had elections couldn't have determined the result. Okay, Mr. Panda, go ahead. Yeah, first of all, I think, uh, like, like I said, probably Hassan is not conversant with Kano politics. Because if he is, he will know, as we are talking today, that Kano... House of Assembly is controlled by APC. 27 out of the 40 members elected are APC. The three senators representing Kano are APC. The 24 members of House of Reps are APC. The governor has won handsomely and he's declared. So if he said APC has lost Kano, no. He's a party chieftain in the national treasurer of APC from Kano. As a founding member of APC, I will tell you that APC is in control of Kano State and will continue to be in control of Kano State. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Hazan, how do you react to that? How do you, what's your reaction? And I, still, and I still stand on my words, Ayo, that if we go for elections tomorrow in Kano, as a party, APC will lose elections in Kano. APC because is in of control of, of the what? House of Assembly. APC senators are, are representing Kano State uh, from all of the things that he has said. So isn't that proof enough that uh, APC actually won the election? Are you saying those elections are also not valid? I, I am saying we as APC have lost Kano. And if we go for elections tomorrow in Kano, APC will lose Kano. Well, Charles, we have to do a lot of work in Kano to win people's heart again. Well, Charles, I think uh, there, is no, there, there is no point for continuing this argument. We, we have to wait for the next four years. Elections have taken place. We have won handsomely. We have delivered 100% House of Reps, 100% Senate. The president has won with over a million votes, GAF. We have, we have over two-thirds of the State House of Assembly. The governor has won. If he's saying if you go to election, APC will lose. Maybe he's talking about 2023. Uh, only God knows between now and 2023 what can happen. For now, it is a done and dusted deal. There is nothing left. For anybody who has issue to challenge, uh, the tribunal is there. Let him go and prove there was no election. For me, this is not an issue. But Mr. There Panda, no election, but the, is, is, uh, is your party, in perhaps when you introspect or... Or uh, was it, is it immaterial that the PDP for this governorship elections got over a million votes? 
Yes, like I said, when you had the governorship election, two things happened. Number one, because we won with over a million votes during the presidential election, we actually relaxed, assuming that we have d delivered. It is a done deal. So because of that, we did not take the issue of the governorship election with all the seriousness that it deserves. And because of that lapse, the Concosia group happened to have control of eight of the 44 local government. And from these eight local government, if you look at the trend of the voter turnout, it was basically 30%. But from these eight local government, they returned 70 to 90%. So because of those massive rigging that they did for a party that won only 10 out of the 44 local governments and they were ahead of us with 26. When we, all have the, when we came to the Iran, we now realized, come on, we cannot throw Kano to opposition. We cannot allow Kano to enter into crisis where you have members of the National Assembly from FEC, members of the State House Assembly from FEC, and allow a greenhorn to come and become the governor and continue to be in crisis with the State House of Assembly, continue to be in crisis with the APC controlled federal government. We now said no. Let us look at how are we going to rescue the situation. We will use the local government and make up for the 26,000 they gave us. We will defeat them at the, at, 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 inside the metropolis. And what did we do to achieve that? The governor of Bachelor relocated to Gama, put his case forward. And they came out massively. You have never had a single person from Gama, which had 40 units that was done for the Iran, a single person that came out from Gama and said, I'm stopped from voting. And like I said, you know the Kwankwasiya group, apart from us and now that decided for this purpose to come with red cap, everywhere they are going, they wear their red cap, including even if, the, if they are sleeping. Show me a single clip where anybody wearing the red cap was molested or prevented from casting his vote. Let's get Mr. Hassan's final words before we go. Go ahead, Mr. Hassan. But if observers, because it's only 141,000 that will... No, Mr. Hassan. I want Hassan. Uh, Chamberlain, Chamberlain uh, my last words are, I'm a party man. I'm an APC stunt supporter, and I'm a party man. But I cannot sacrifice my party for an individual. So if anyone in this party, and APC is bigger than Ganduji, and if anyone in my party tries to belittle the party and the leadership of the party, I will, I will come out and say the truth. That is it. That's my submission. All right, gentlemen, well, Mr. Damo Panda, National Treasurer of the APC, and Alwan Hassan, the member of the APC. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on the program today. We'll be back in a moment and focus, well, still on politics, but uh, stay with us.